Hey, it's me. I couldn't figure out how to, uh, how to click the button to uh, get started. All right. It is the Managed Comics Thought Stream and uh, hey, new Managed Comics merch. How's that? That's pretty cool, eh? Um, yeah, today I thought we would do something a little bit different. We've talked a lot about Managed Comics recently. Um, we are, I think, three weeks into our, our beta tests. Um, things are going really well. We found a whole bunch of bugs. And um, this week in the email that I'll send out, I'll kind of go over a bunch of the, the bugs we found. Um, but they're just getting squashed. And uh, that's good. Um, we've got a, a kind of the big thing that we're working on right now is figuring out the, the easiest way to streamline bringing people into the platform. So um, the managed comics way is fairly easy because we can kind of straight port people over from our old system to the new one. Um, but figuring out how we're going to do that with folks that aren't using managed comics right now, a little bit trickier. Uh, it's not impossible. We've done something similar before with people that came from Comic Suite or people that came from Comicsology way back in the day. Um, yeah, so so we'll figure it out. I'm uh, I'm pretty pretty confident in that stuff. But today, I really want to talk about something that's kind of exciting for us, which is our Geek Fetch uh, and kind of how it works with in conjunction with Managed Comics and and more importantly how it works even outside of managed comics. Um, some of the stuff that we use it to do, for example, when I'm setting up a Shopify store for a retailer, I use it to actually create all the initial products. Um, and even if they already have products, I'll often use it to kind of append the data. Uh, and I'm gonna go through some reasons why. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I've noticed when we get into another Shopify store is, some of the data that's missing that we think is integral to uh, to building a good store in 2021. So let's talk a little bit about hybrid revenue, hybrid retail, easy for me to say, um, which is the future of retail. And really what hybrid retail means is it's the combination of bricks and clicks. So we all know, you know, brick and mortar is, has, has really been kind of the the bedrock of the comics community for the entire time that comics have been around. Um, the online platform has has always been looked kind of with suspicion by a lot of stores, and all that changed in 2020 when the pandemic took over, and a lot of places had no choice but to to get online. Um, really, what we saw was the combination of brick and mortar location with a website really, really gives you superpowers that you just didn't have before. So we worked on enabling that and really making it a, a big thing. And post, well, I mean, we're still in the middle of the pandemic, but post kind of the height of the pandemic where nobody really knew what to do and, and really kind of what the next steps were. What we've seen with the successful stores is that they have managed to kind of combine the online and the offline experience. And rather than shipping stuff out of state and, and you know, potentially losing on those issue number two, threes and fours of that hot book, um, if you can cultivate a group that sometimes buys stuff before they come into the store, so they make sure that they can get it. Um, I, I've done this myself. Uh, there was a, a board game that I wanted to pick up from a local store. I bought it online, I went to the store, I picked it up, and I bought a couple more things while I was in store. Um, so, so it doesn't have to mean that you're gonna ship it. And in fact, when I'm in Canada, and often shipping things to me is prohibitively expensive. So if I can hop in my car and, and drive across town and pick it up and have a few minutes in the store, um, that's great. It's really good on for, for multi-locations um, because you can say, pick it up in the specific store. Uh, and then sometimes there's some, you know, logistics around, you have this in store A and you need to get it over to store B, but most multi-location places I know of, um, usually have some sort of communication going on between the stores and, and they're sharing inventory anyway. So this just becomes a new, you know, part of that. And when somebody picks it up online, you know, there's still a, uh, notification that goes out that says that your item is ready. So it's not like the expectation is I'm going to buy this online and I'm going to pick it up in five minutes. I'm going to buy it online and I'm going to pick it up when you tell me I can come and get it. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the the thought behind hybrid retail. But when we look at websites, what we see is that the the product pages are really really important, and it's a combination of what you see and what you don't see. So obviously, what you see is you need to have terms on your page that a customer and not a retailer would search for. Terms like TP and CVR are not what a human being is searching for. It's what the industry has made us think is important because they truncate all the titles and everything. Um, things like the SKU and the vendor are things that people may search for. So they might actually search for the diamond code or the lunar code. So you need to have those things on your page somewhere but they don't have to be primary things. And then there's tags and, and things like that, which are gonna be used kind of behind the scenes to help sort of organize collections together, um, to organize products together, and also to organize things on your site. Um, what you don't see behind the scenes, so this is actually the metadata from, from a web page. And I know it's a little bit like looking at the matrix, but it all makes sense. Things like the title and um, your type of product um, description, those kind of things are, are really important for the various different spiders that crawl your site. And even like, for example, Google, um, Google products, if you're gonna have things on the Google products platform or even the Facebook uh, platform, um, these things are all the things that are actually gonna be used to create those products. When we look at a good product page, what, what really makes a good product page? We start out with SEO friendly titles and SEO is sh short for search engine optimization. Uh, and what that means is like if this was Batman 104 CVRA George, that doesn't make sense but cover A is actually something somebody might search for. Very few people are gonna type in Batman number 104 CVR A. So just taking little things like um, common abbreviations and, and expanding them uh, is, is an important thing. Um, having a good sized but well optimized image is really important. So just putting up a 700K image on your page while it's lovely, um, it's actually gonna impact your speed scores on your site. So we optimize all of our images before we put them up in our system, and then they get re-optimized when Shopify or WooCommerce kind of smushes them. You want clear pricing and COGS data. So COGS is cost of goods sold. So you need to have your pricing very clear visibly. Behind the scenes, you need your, your cost of goods sold pricing so that you know what your margin is on every item. You obviously need your product type, your vendor type, and any tags. Um, tags can include like writer, title, publisher, cover artists, artists. Um, we do genre. Uh, I'm trying to think there's there's one more that I'm missing. Um, but we, we create all those tags for you uh, behind the scenes using GeekFetch. And you obviously need a SKU, a barcode, and inventory quantity. So those are all, all things that uh, get included on a product page. So this is where we get to GeekFetch. So GeekFetch really was born from a, a problem that started last year uh, during the pandemic when, and I mean, going back even further, this has always been a problem. It just wasn't a problem that we particularly cared about before. Um, there's always been multiple vendors. So there's been booksellers who also sell into comics, but by and large, Diamond was the primary distributor. So when Diamond, um, when, sorry, DC left Diamond for Lunar and UCS, we knew instantly that there was gonna be a big problem, that there was gonna be some continuity of data that was gonna get lost. Um, and a horror, kind of a horror <laughs> scenario was that at some point, Diamond would stop creating series codes. So series codes are what makes Batman um, something that's subscribable. And we'd never really bothered to create our own series codes because why would we? Um, so when this happened, we realized that we needed sort of a database for all this stuff. At the same time, we realized that this data needs to be delivered in different formats. So sometimes uh, managed comics needs it in a very specific format. Um, we don't wanna change the data that's going into managed comics because then we'd have to refactor various things for managed comics. 
Um, Shopify has data in a very specific way that it needs. Likewise, WooCommerce needs data in a very specific way. And other systems like Lightspeed or whatever will also need their own data in, in their specific ways. So if we could have one system that could have all this data and could output it in whatever format we need, um, that'd be the ideal situation. So we just went ahead and built it because that's what we do. Um, we started out with about 300,000 products. We've added 3,000 to 5,000 new products every month. We're closing in on 360K. So as of today, it's 358,372 products. We do mostly have Diamond, L Lunar, UCS, and Penguin Random House data in there, but we also have um, some other uh, di distributors, game distributors that we've gone out and, and fetched some data for. Uh, we've gotten... I want to say ACD or Asmodee's data in there um, and a couple other places. So, so we're trying to get more and more data so that the it's easier for stores to get products onto their website and then also into their point of sale system. Um, we cross the streams. We are distributor agnostic. So we have uh, everything goes into our system and then we assign everything a GeekFetch ID and if it has a um, the same SKU or the same ISPN, then they're all the same product. So I don't care whether it comes from Penguin Random House, Diamond UK, um, Diamond US, which yes, they are different things and often have different diamond codes. Um, whether it comes from Lunar or UCS or some third party in the future that comes along and decides they wanna start distributing, um, we don't care because we put everything in there. And then we also create our own series code. So we create a GeekFetch series code, which can take everybody else's series code and map them to our one series code to rule it all. So as long as one of those um, many SKUs has at least one <laughs> series code that we recognize, uh, we can map it out. So, uh, and I don't care whether it's Diamond that gets it right or Lunar that gets it right or, um, Frankly, we get it right before anybody else does. Uh, we can map all that stuff. We are also, so we've we've got Diamond and Lunar data. We've worked with Penguin Random House and we're, we're getting all their data. Um, they've been fantastic to work with. I wish that Diamond and Lunar were as responsive as Penguin Random House, but you know everybody has their own challenges. And we're working on deals with other distributors. Um, there's a couple of, independent distributors out there uh, who we've had talks with. Um, and I'm, I'm always interested in like, you know, we, we do have data from bad idea. So we bring our bad idea data in and, and make that available as well. Um, yeah, so we're, we're constantly working um, on other deals. So what do we do with this data once we get it? Well, we, um, we normalize it. And what that means is we transform everything to capital case. Uh, so it becomes, you know, Batman, the year of the bat. Um, and then we remove all the extraneous data, like the C100 and stuff like that that gets in there. Then we go through and we update specific abbreviations. So we have a, a title replacement pattern of about, I want to say it's about 350 items that we go through um, and, and change. So simple things like, you know, B&W, we change to the words black and white. Uh, PTG, we change to printing. So second PTG becomes second printing because that's how people um, search or they may search for second print. But as long as the word print is in there, that becomes the same thing. Um, if somebody searched for second printing and we only had the word print, then that wouldn't come up as the same word. Uh, and, and basically we simplify, clarify, and standardize everything. So we want it all to look the same. Um, there's a few of these terms in here where we actually are taking different variations of a term and making it the same term because uh, a good example is some people call it CVR. Some places will call it C-O-V-E-R. Um, some, the, there's a collection. Uh, sometimes it's C O L. Sometimes it's C-O-L-L, -L, sometimes it's collection. Uh, special edition is S-P-E-D or special E-D. or So we take all those words and we, we kind of 
normalize them and make them make sense. And then there's there's little things like spy X family, which is a lowercase x um, and that was brought to us our attention by Charles from uh, the co uh, new comics listing. Um, then we standardize the publisher listings. So we go through and <laughs> look at all the different ways that you can spell boom studios. There's boom exclamation mark studios. There's boom studios. There's boom entertainment and boom entertainment. Um, of course there is. So we just make those all boom studios. So it's uh, just one thing to search for. Danica says uh, penguin random house is absolutely the best. Bad idea is a company. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to say nasty things about that idea, but I, I can't disagree. Um, the, the passive aggressive thing has certainly caused some aggression. Um, we crowdsource our image updates. So we do updates um, quite frequently. So we go out and fetch new updates, I, I think once a week. Um, we also fetch them on initial orders and, uh, and final order cutoffs as well. Um, but when anybody in our system updates an image, everybody benefits because we go through and get notifications that these images have been updated. We approve all those. So we actually check and make sure that they're they're accurate. Um, sometimes we've seen that, that people have updated the wrong thing on, on an image. So we just go in and, and fix it because we can update things manually as well which means every day our system's getting a little bit uh, a little bit smarter. Um, what can GeekFetch do for you? So it can export data in a variety of different ways. So we generate our managed comics import file this way. Um, it gives us clean data that allows different people to search things like in our, in our stores that allows them to search things properly. But it also maintains the same data format that Managed Comics was already using. So we didn't have to rebuild our system to uh, accept all the new data from Lunar and, uh, and Penguin Random House. Instead, what we did is we just normalized all that data inside of GeekFetch. And then we send out a really nice clean file for Managed Comics. So we didn't have to refactor any code, which thank God, because that code isn't fun to refactor anymore. Um, this is Managed Comics 1.0, by the way, not the new system. Um, we create Shopify data. So we can create Shopify data with uh, CSV files that uh, are complete with title, description, image, vendor information, product type, product tags, um, your retail price, and your cost, which we get from your invoice. Um, so those are always accurate. And we can do the same thing with WooCommerce. So we can generate the exact same file. Um, for WooCommerce in the WooCommerce kind of format. So how can you use it? Um, so you can upload an invoice from Diamond, Lunar, UCS, and coming soon, Penguin Random House. Uh, or you can search for products by title, publisher, call, code, and month category and publisher. Um, you review and change the data. So you can update your quantity, your image. You can change the image if you need to. Um, change the price or your cost if those are wrong on your invoice, which happens occasionally. You can import your CSV into um, Shopify and then Shopify creates all the products behind the scene. There is a little caveat there that if you have multiple locations, Shopify doesn't actually create the um, different product or quantities for different locations. So that is something you have to go into afterwards and, and change. Um, you can also use it with our productizer Shopify app that's coming soon. We're actually revamping this um, for a number of reasons, but one of them is that we want it to work as kind of a prelude to manage comics. So it will actually tag things with our geek fetch IDs so that um, the, the products on your website will show up with our IDs um, when, when everything's ready. A um, couple notes about the invoices. So you get your invoices by going to Lunar Distribution or Diamond, and I'll show you the Diamond process that later. And there's a specific type of invoice you need to download just because it has more information than their, their default invoice type. <coughs> um, with Diamond, you just go to View Recent Invoices and you download the CSV version of it. Um, on Diamond, there's two different types of data. There's a comic suite style and comics web style. Um, we we actually have a, a way of telling the difference between them. 
Um, one of them has like a letter in it and the other one doesn't. I think we even, yeah, we say that here. So this is a, this is an example of a comic web. If it's got like a letter at the end of the thing versus the comic suite has the letter in a different place. And I think the letters are the discount code on the actual product. Um, so that's kind of geek fetch in a nutshell. Um, we've got a couple last things we're going to do. We're going to revamp the app, um, before we pro like kind of really start promoting it. Um, we're making a couple quick changes. First of all, I'm going to add help documentation cause we didn't have any help documentation in it. So, um, we'll just go through and add that in a couple places. We're going to do a small tweak to the way the invoices are imported. Uh, I'd like to avoid the Diamond Web versus Diamond Comic Suite because you don't actually know what it is unless you look at the file, and that's a pain. And we're going to add the Geek Fetch tags behind the scenes so that Managed Comics will work out of the gate. So um, basically, we have a Geek Fetch series code on every product, and what that allows us to do is once you're, you've enabled Managed Comics on your site, it says if a product has a series code, it says um, subscribe to this product now. And then you can add, we're going to add a seven day free trial and we'll relaunch this soon and, and we'll let everyone know on our, uh, on our mailing list. Um, we're also going to add some more data options, uh, groups, crossovers, and more. So we're going to add some metadata for different ways of searching. So crossovers like War of the Bounty Hunters or a group title like All Star Wars or even characters like just All Zuckus because I'm a huge Zuckus fan, which until I was probably 26, I thought was the robot dude on the uh, on the left and not the uh, actual guy on the right. <laughs> oh, Star Wars. So if you want more information, just join the wait list and uh, we'll get some stuff. Um, do you, We've got Danica and uh, Books with Pictures here. Anybody have any questions for me that I can answer? Go back to my, my full me. Um, because I'd like to be able to figure out how to... Oh, there we go. I can show Danica's question. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, will I do... So Entropy says, will we do tags for ratio coverage? Yeah, for sure. We'll add that uh, on the list because that's uh, that's an important thing. We are creating that data right now in GeekFetch. So that would be an easy thing for us to show. Like, uh, are you thinking like 1 in 20 or 1 in 10, that kind of stuff? Um, Dal asks, Hey, Brian looks great. Wondering if geek fed service would work to upgrade. Yes, it will. Um, yeah. So, um, right now you'd be able to, so you can upload your invoices, um, and you could upload, yeah, you could upload all your SKUs as long as you have the diamond and lunar SKUs, you could upload those with the quantities and it will go through and update them. Let me check that first. We'll be able to add tags and descriptions to existing items. Yeah. Um, I'll test that on one of my dev stores to make sure it's not just doubling things up. Um, but if it's not, then we will uh, we'll get in there and, and make it happen. Because all we should have to do is just, as long as we can match on the handles, we should be able to update your stuff. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Watch Andrea at, so this is Book With Pictures, Oregon, I believe. Um, I watched Andrea do the transition from Comic Hub in the spring, and it was very clunky, and I'm four times her size. Um, yeah, if you're with Comic Hub right now, so the big problem is Comic Hub doesn't have a way of getting the data out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how to solve that problem. Um, I, I don't have an answer right now for how to solve the problem of getting the Comic Hub data out. And I've worked with a couple of Comic Hub stores and it's always been painful. Um, I think that's, you know, by design, they, they want to make it hard. Just to be totally transparent, we make, your data is your data. So we make all your data available to you as a CSV. And if there aren't links on the pages right now, um, there will be because that's a simple, simple change. And, and uh, I want to make sure that you guys always have access to your own data. 
Um, any other questions for me while I'm here? Dal, that's a great point, and I will I will make sure that we can. I, I, you've got my brain thinking now. Like, how can we tag in? Because so Shopify works everything off of a handle. Um, our handle is usually a little bit different, just because uh, the way that we format the the string for the title uh, is done to make it a little more um, SEO friendly. But we should be able to figure out what handles are in your system, tie them to the the SKU, and then just update it with new tags, which would be that'd be ideal. I wish Shopify had a better way of just. Like I want to be able to just update tags off of handles, but they don't have a simple way right now. Yeah, that's great. Diamond codes and U UPCs are are the way to go for sure. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna give you guys oh an ISPN. Yeah, and with uh, Shopify, it uses the ISPN six or ISPN plus five, which. I have to figure out exactly where those are stored. I think we show by default the ISBN regular, um, and we do show the UPC plus five. So we just got to find the how how those other uh, ISBNs are displaying. Um, yeah, if if there's no more questions, um, we will wrap it up for today. Um, there will be an email this week, kind of a, an update email. And then uh, I'm going to try and do these once a week, every Thursday, uh, at 3 p.m. I'm also going to send out a, a just a questionnaire asking people what time would be better for them. Because um, it, if it turns out, you know, some folks want us to do a little bit later or earlier, uh, then I'll, I'll do one just kind of mix it up a little bit and, and allow more people um, in. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, we'll do something different every week. Uh, what data are you adding for non-comics items? Um, so we add photo, just one photo right now. I'd like to get multiple photos in at some point. Um, we add uh, description. Um, description. I don't know which tags off the top of my head. And then of course your cost of goods sold information gets on there. And then we add, um, we would add like Marvel legends as a product category, I think. Um, so yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I can actually check through and, and send you a separate email with what we send. Um, yeah. We're really looking forward to the Shopify app. Oh man. I, I can't wait for the app to get out there. It's getting better every day. Um, I'm literally working right now on the um, initial order and final order cutoff stuff. And so I've got I've got a whole bunch of images. I've got stuff on my whiteboard here that I've, I've been going through. I've actually uh, showing the, the various drop downs and stuff for that. So yeah, we're really, uh, we're really excited about where this is going. Um, the system is so much easier to work with than, than our old managed comic system right now. So that's nice. It's just, you know, technology changes so much in five years and, uh, we're using kind of the latest versions of Ruby on rails and the latest like Shopify components and stuff. And it just makes things a lot easier. Even that said though, we're running into limitations with Shopify, like stupid one. You can't set the limit on a, on a column size. So like some of the dumb titles go way, way far, and then they make things scroll weird. And so we're always trying to, to, you know, butt up against the limitations of the systems, but we're figuring it out. So yeah, pretty excited. And I'm hoping that, uh, that by this time next week, we'll have some really good news about, uh, about what our next step is and, and how we're going to go uh, live for everyone. So that is going to wrap it up for today. Um, thank you very much to everybody who showed up and, and asked questions, and uh, we will talk soon. <laughs>